Old news tonight from Babagidi Imo Television. First, the headlines. Tinubu restructures Nigerian government operations, deploy 13 key agencies to SGF's office. Netherlands overtakes India as Nigeria's biggest oil buyer. Distribute FG's 5 billion naira palliatives before Christmas, UK Affairs Ferry urges Southwest governors. Tinubu Wiki have no power over you, Edwin Clark tells Fubara. On sports, CAF confirms Super Eagles provisional lists. I am Mori Rebila Lawal, the news in detail. President Bola Ahmed Tinumbu has issued a directive restructuring government operations by deploying essential agencies to the Secretary to the Government of the Federation SGF office to streamline administrative processes and improve service delivery. The move was confirmed by Shegun head of media and communications at the SGF office. On his path, Abiodun Ogumefun, director of planning, research and statistics, said several agencies facing challenges beyond their supervising ministry scope have been temporarily reassigned to the SGF's office until the issues are resolved. The initiative is said to align with outcomes of the recent ministerial retreat convened by President Tinubu in November focusing on enhancing governmental policies and efficiencies. The agencies include National Agency for Engineering Infrastructure, National Identity Management Commission, Nigerian Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative, Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission, Fiscal Responsibilities Commission, National Quality Council, National Hydroelectric Power Producing Areas Development Commission, Bureau of Public Service Reforms, National Pension Commission, Border Community Development Agency, National Boundary Commission, National Identity Management Commission, Glazil Black Backbone Limited. The Netherlands are state overtaking India as the biggest buyer of Nigerian crude oil, marking a change in the dynamics of the West African nation's energy exports. Data from the National Bureau of Statistics showed that the Netherlands bought Nigerian crude oil worth 2.5 trillion naira in the first nine months of 2023, while India's imports from Africa's top producer was valued at 1.6 trillion naira. Indonesia and France occupied second and third positions as they purchased Nigerian crude worth 1.72 trillion naira and 1.65 trillion naira, respectively, as of September 2023. Analysts attributed these development to sanctions over the Ukraine conflict, which have driven India's refiners to snap up in discounted Russian oil, leading to a decline in demand for Nigeria's crude oil. Moving on to the next story. Gravely concerned about the biting economic hardship that seems to know no end soon. The UK arm of the Afeni Ferry Group, a pan Yoruba social cultural global organization, has issued a mandate to the governors of the southwest state of Nigeria to urgently take palliative steps towards cushioning the excruciating effects or the helpless Nigerians. As Christmas end of the year celebration approaches and the Nigerian economy bites other, pan Yoruba social cultural group Afeni Ferry in the United Kingdom and Europe has called on the Southwest governors to urgently distribute in totality the federal government approved 5 billion naira palliative for each state to procure food items for distribution to the poor in their respective states. In August 2023, the federal government, led by President Bola Tinubu, announced a 5 billion naira palliative package for each state of the federation, including the Federal Capital Territory FCT, to cushion the impact of the removal of the petrol subsidy. In a statement issued today, by the group secretary in the UK, engineer Anthony Ajayi, said the UK Affairs Ferry is aware that the federal government has released 2 billion naira from the 5 billion naira offered to each state as a palliative to cushion the impact of the petrol subsidy removal since September 2023, adding, nothing is being said about the balance 3 billion naira. The group said this is the right time the Southwest governors should distribute the remaining palliatives because the people are suffering. Prominent Ijo leader Edwin Clark has asked Governor Siminalai Fubara of River State to stay through to himself. Recall President Bolatinobu intervened in a political impasse in River State and brokered peace 
between Governor of Fubara and the Ministry of the Federal Capital Territory, Yeson Wiki, at a meeting held at the Presidential Villa in Abuja on Monday. During the meeting, which was attended by the Rivers Deputy Governor, Ungozi Odu, former Governor Peter Odeli, and other stakeholders, Wiki and Fubara signed an eight point agreement to settle the crisis. Addressing a press conference in Abuja on Tuesday, Clark told Governor Fubara that President Bola Tinumbu and his predecessor did not have any power over him and should ignore the directives given to him. The other statement stated that it was clear that to Nigerians that Governor Fubara was ambushed and intimidated into submission at the meeting. Clark told Fubara that he was elected the same way the president was elected, adding that the presidential intervention was illegal and unconstitutional. Nigeria's public debt profile, according to a recent report by the Debt Management Office, DMO, has increased to 87.91 trillion naira at the end of the third quarter of 2023. The DMO disclosed these in a statement posted on its official X handle on Thursday. The total public debt as of September 30, 2023, was 87.91 trillion naira or 114.35 US billion dollar. The amount represented domestic and external debt of the federal government of Nigeria, the 36 state government, and the federal capital territory. At 87.91 trillion naira, the total public debt stock represents a marginal increase of 0.61% when compared to the June 30, 2023 figure of 87.38 trillion naira. This trend is explained by the decrease in external debt from USD 43.16 billion naira as at June 30, 2023, uh, to US dollar of 41.59 billion as at September 30, 2023, and a relatively moderate increase of 1.80 trillion naira in the domestic debt. Nigerians living in South Africa have staged a protest march in Johannesburg against brutality and extrajudicial killings of Nigerians in the country by the South African police. The protest organized by the Nigeria Citizens Association in South Africa attacked protest march against brutality, intimidation and harassment, violent damage to business properties, robbery, assault and death of our citizens in the hands of South African police, was held at Peter Roos Park, Empire Road, Park packed down JFB on Monday. The protesters demanded justice for a Nigerian who, according to the protesters, sells drugs and the police had always collected a bribe from him and let go, but the police killed him and he, the day he told them he didn't have money to give them as usual. Narrating during the protest how the young Nigerian was killed, one of the protesters said all of us were here this morning and this particular WDI arrived. When they saw this guy, they were chasing him. Always more than four to eight times. Any time they caught this boy, they took all his money. Every time. Today, this guy didn't have money and he started running. And he had only one narcotic he was smoking on his hand. They chased him to attack the wreck. We all went there and they grabbed this boy and handcuffed him behind and started beating him. They brought a plastic bucket and put it on his head and poured tear gas on him. We confronted them in South Africans in Nigeria, but nobody touches them. Nobody ever heard that anyone in Nigeria ought a South African. Why are they arming horse? We are human beings, not chicken. Normally, if they meet you on the street, if you find them something, they would let you go and you do your things. It is the job of the police, we know, in South Africa. The Ayogure of Ikurudu in Lagos State of Akabiru should to be on Tuesday all Nigerians to be prayerful and believe in President Bola Tinumbu's renewed hope agenda. The Royal Father made the call during the annual Christmas carol at East Palace in Ikurudu on Tuesday. He said that the President was working towards repositioning the economy of Nigeria. I want people to believe in Christ and believe in prayers despite the situation of the country we are still alive. We should continue to pray because we don't want to witness war. We want peace and once we have peace, every other thing will follow. Anything that will be good will be tough at the beginning. Let us give the president a chance to make our country better, the king said. According to him, Nigeria is one of the leading countries in terms of human capital and has produced a lot of brilliant people that are marketable in the old world. He urged residents to live peacefully and show love to one another during the Yuletide and beyond. 
Very Reverend Father John Sholibi, minister in charge of Patriot Bology Methodist Cathedral in Kurudu, admonish people to be prayerful, peaceful, and spread good news to save lives. You are watching the world news from BGI Television. Next to come. The federal government has taken over the maintenance of the rehabilitated pitch and scoreboard of the Moshud Abiola National Stadium, Abuja, from Dangote Group. This comes two years after the rehabilitation of the stadium's pitch and scoreboards was completed and added over to the former Minister of Youth and Sport Development, Chief Sunday Diary, under the Adopt a Pitch Initiative of the federal government. The repair work was handled by Aaron Natural Limited and sponsored by Billionaire Ali Kodangote with a commitment of two years maintenance period, which has now elapsed. In a brief ceremony yesterday in Abuja, Sport Development Minister Senator John Owa Eno expressed delight with the completion of work and handing over of the rehabilitated pitch and scoreboard to the government by the Dangote Group and Aero Nigeria Limited. The minister commended the companies for the completion of the two years post maintenance rehabilitation and called for increased collaboration between the government and the private sector to further advance sport development in Nigeria. To foreign story, the Colorado Supreme Court on Tuesday disqualified former President Donald Trump from the ballot in the state presidential election next year over his role in the January 6, 2021 attack on the U.S. Capitol by his supporters. According to Reuters, the ruling makes Trump the first presidential candidate in U.S. history to be deemed ineligible for the White House under a rarely used provision of the U.S. Constitution that bars officials who have engaged in insurrection or rebellion from holding office. The courts concluded that the U.S. Constitution bars the front runner for the Republican nomination in 2024 from appearing on the ballot because of his role in instigating violence against the U.S. government. The ruling applies only to the state's March 5 Republican primary, but its conclusion would likely also affect Trump's status for the November 5 January general election. Nonpartisan U.S. election forecasters view Colorado as safely democratic meaning that President Joe Biden will likely carry the state regardless of Trump's faith. Finally, sports. The Confederation of Africa Football has released the provisional squad for the 2023 Africa Cup of Nations as submitted by the Super Eagles coach, Jose Pesero. CAF confirmed the list as it's closed on its website today. Pesero is expected to make his final squad submission to CAF before the January 3rd deadline expires. Included on the list are three home base players Ojo Oluwashego Eyimba FC, Christian Umoke Sporting Lagos FC, and Obasogi Amers Bendel Insurance. Following a decision by CAF Organizing Committee of the AFCON, all 24 teams will be permitted a final squad of 27 players, four more than the initial 23 from previous tournaments. The registration of the four additional players on the final list is only an option. In a case, our team submit a final squad of the team between 24 to 27 players, only 23 of them will be available for selection for each match during the tournament. Meanwhile, a player in the final squad can only be replaced after a serious injury no less than 24 hours before the team's first match following the approval of medical certificate by the CAF Medical Committee. The information obtained on the CAF website read. The final tournament will take place from January 13 to February 11, 2024 in the avoiding cities of Abidjan, Buake, Kol Hogo, San Pedro, and Yamasokro. Francis Uzoho, Timitayo Aino, Jamie Lou Collins, NDD Welfare, William Ekong, Ajayi, Adesiawo, Ahmed Musa, Ogo Chuku Onyeka, Victor Osime, Ayodele Aribo Oluwasheyi, Samo Chukweze, Ademola Lukman, Seidi Senesi, Kelechi Inacho, Moses Simon, Adebayo Adeleye, Calvin Uche Lubam, Alexandra Uwobi, Sodik Umer, Awazim Collins, Tyron Evoyi, Kenneth Omeruo, Ojo Luwashegon, Apoguma Ufoma, Victor Boniface, or Imachi to mention a few that complete the calf list. With that sports story, we've come to the end of today's world news before we go some headlines. Tinumbu restructures Nigeria government operations, deploys 13 key agencies to SGF's office. Netherlands overtake India as Nigeria's biggest oil buyer. Distribute FG's 5 billion naira palliative before Christmas, UK affirming ferry audit Southwest governors. 
Tenobu Wiki have no power over you, Edwin Clark tells Fubara. On sports, CAF confirms Super Eagles provisional list. For updates of our broadcast on YouTube, our handle is Babagede Immortal Television. Can you subscribe and click on the notification bell, select option all to access all of our broadcasts. On Facebook, Babagede Immortal with Alawi Adibayo. Please like and follow the page. For advert placement of your goods and services, coverage of events and function, please dial the phone number streaming on the screen. Thank you for watching. I am Moviri Fabila Lawa. Good evening.